Hey, welcome to our episode of Chad's Beer Podcast with me, Chad of Chad's Beer Views, and Matt from Massive Beers. What's going on, man? Oh, not much, man. You know, and hot. Just hot. <laughs> yeah. But it's actually been a tolerable week up here in the East. I'm sure you're hot all the time down there. But no, yeah. everything's good, man. You know, I can't complain. Yeah. <clears throat> this is this is a little different format than my usual podcast. Usually I just like interview somebody. Um, but and maybe I'll start trying to start doing this more often because I kind of wanted to react to something. So um, there's this video um, from Scott Reviews Things that's making the rounds. H have beer reviews had their day? And it's up to almost a thousand views right now. It was just from like a week ago. And then um, I think Northern Southerner, he did a uh, reaction to it. Yeah, here it is. And both of these guys are in the UK and these are both very, very long videos. So I'm not going to play them because it would, it would just take forever, you know? So, you know, I've been here since 2008. You've been here from what? 2014? 2014. 2014. Yeah. Okay. And it's funny because you have like four times as many views or many uh, episodes as I have. What are you on? Like 4,000 something? Yeah. 4,000 pushing five, five, five yeah. thousand. Stuff like that. I'm only yeah. on. Yeah. 1500 or something but i did take I, you know I, I have taken a long time off here and there yeah I'm but anyway so you know like what scott said and yeah could you par could you paraphrase because i i skimmed the videos real quick if there's any major talking points or anything like that if you could just kind of give us a yeah. gist of what they were saying and whole as a whole i forget the name of the guy who does northern southerner sorry but um just the, like they're both in the uk and like they kind of see it from like that perspective and they're saying like, you know, I think they have a lot of the same grievances that we have is that like, you know, craft beer really isn't what it was. Like, I think the heyday was kind of like when you started and uh, like, and I don't, I don't mean beer too. I'm talking about like the actual craft beer industry, you know, like when Stone mm -hmm. was still independent and like Brewdog was, was a Maverick brewery. And, you know, I think uh, Treehouse and uh, Hill Farmstead were like just starting to blow up back then and they're still huge now yeah but um they were saying like you know like so much beer is kind of boring now and like really expensive and they're they're like kind of perplexed like why you know like craft beer and beer in general is just so much easier to come by now i mean it's nice here in the states because I remember, like, when I first started this channel, like, 2008, like, I was getting all my beer from a beer store. Like, you couldn't get, like, any craft beer from the supermarket except, like, Sam Adams or Saranac or Magic Hat, you know? Yeah. And, you know, you can get, like, Dogfish Head and, like, Goose Island, Voodoo Ranger, you know, all that stuff. I can get that at the supermarket or the gas station. I've even seen KBS and, like, Dragon's Milk at the supermarket, you know? And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so like the, the grievance is like, you know, and I've been saying this for a while is like craft beer, like, you know, 10 years ago, there was like so many different styles and now they all seem to have kind of coalesced around three main styles, hazy IPA, pastry stout and sl slurs that yeah, slushy sours or kettle sours or whatever you want to call them. And, uh, the actual beer tube scene, like really isn't what it was because i remember like back in the early days let's say like 2010 to like 2015 or so like you would go on like beer geek nation or you know uh like any of his uh affiliate channels or network channels to like find out what, like what was the next must-have product you know mm -hmm. and there's really nobody um that i can think of who's like really like the the tastemaker of the moment I guess. So like, I mean, I guess I would put it to you. Like who, who is your tastemaker? Like, where do you get the, Oh, I got like, you know, I got, I got to try that beer, you know, like who, who's that for you? It's not, I'm, that's the thing though. For me, it's a little bit different. I think we're actually going to um, disagree on a lot of things um, <laughs> here in which I think makes for a better conversation, but um, no, I, I mean, just to start from, 
cover all the stuff you talk about. You know, when you know Chris was doing his stuff with his his people that were doing stuff. You know, Ryan Rashawn and and mm-hmm. you know when you had uh, Better Beer Authority and uh, you know all those people that were doing his stuff back in the day. It was it was fun to watch. Um, you know, some people still you know come through. You know, Peter's still going at it, and there's some yeah. other people, some people that keep doing it. But I don't know if I really ever thought about. Steltzy as a like a tastemaker uh, more than just he was the b- biggest fish in the smallest pond uh, and he okay. just uh, hit at the right time you know he kept the stuff short and concise uh, he he definitely followed the uh, I think which is the tenant of, of beer reviews which is always confident but often wrong uh, you know, a lot of stuff he said, he, he, he stated it as almost fact as opposed to opinion, uh, even though it was mostly opinion. Uh, so I think a lot of people gravitated towards him, um, you know, and then, you know, he bounced out and there was other people that kind of came in and helped fill the void. But it's one of those things where I think the breweries are the kind of the tastemakers now, as opposed to I, I, I don't think beer tubers were ever that. I think breweries yeah. are. I mean, you look at you think beer tubes like dying but then you see treehouse start a youtube channel and they're up to five 500k subs in yeah. less than a year you know what i mean so well i mean not- i wouldn't i wouldn't count breweries as part of beer tube i count like us like the amateurs you know like, well i mean it, you know and it's almost like breweries to a certain extent if you want to talk about it that way is that i think it's regional you know um you know i think a lot of people have a larger following from the people in and around their area you know, the lighter, larger swath of beer that you cover, obviously, you're going to get people from all over the place. You know, whenever I post a review, I just posted some Belgian brewery I've never had before. And I had people coming out of the woodwork from overseas and stuff like that. But more often mm-hmm. than not, it ends up being kind of localized. So you see the beer tube channels that are doing decently well. It's typically because they lean into their local beer scene. You know, whether it be Joe from the Beer Patrol or Kyle from the High Beer Reviews doing the New York stuff. Or, you know, and again, you can pop out anybody like that. It's more of a regional thing, which is, if you think about it, that's kind of how breweries kind of exist now. You know, yeah. if you if you strip away the Sierra Nevadas or even like the hype breweries that are big now, the Trilliums of the world, the Treehouse of the world, it's really breweries that are just kind of dominating their local market, you know, and that kind of seems like beer tube. Beer tube is following exactly mm-hmm. what's going on in beer. Basically, beer is getting way less popular and so is pe- people watching videos on youtube about yeah. beer you know it's almost like par for the course yeah i agree i agree with you up like up to a point i i was actually uh talking about this with simon from real ale guide when he was on the, the show a few weeks ago and you know i was saying i said the same thing you said like i think the the reason like beer tube and by i've defined beer tube by it's like you know amateur you know uh like amateur content makers like us who are just like really enthusiastic about beer, you know, doing reviews, podcasts, documentaries, what have you. Um, and yeah, like, because like in 2010 or something, like when before like supermarket craft beer of today was like kind of maverick beer back then, like Lagunitas, Dogfish Head, uh, New Belgium, you know, and like now like what was edgy and like kind of punk at the time is like now mainstream. So it like loses like a lot of cachet that like, I can just get Lagunitas Maximus IPA at the supermarket, like in a big 19.2 ounce can or something, you know, or, and like a lot of breweries have sold out to uh, Budweiser too. Like I just did like golden road mango cart the other night and uh, like wicked weed and uh, Elysian or whatever it's called. And so, mm-hmm. I don't know if the UK really has the same thing. Cause like, I think like, as far as I know, like the UK, aside from like Fuller's and Samuel Smith's or, you know, Moreland and, uh, you know, like the major breweries, a lot of them are owned by Heineken or Carlsberg or InBev or whatever. Like it, they seem to be like super localized too, but also England is like the size of like New York or New Jersey. So it's like, you, it's probably a lot easier to come by something local there. I mean, well, the there's a couple country of, is. Go there's ahead. a couple of things that are weird over there. I don't, and by weird, I mean different. I shouldn't say weird because that's probably the uh, wrong way to phrase it. Uh, I know a lot about the uh, uh, the European beer scene, and mm-hmm. um, like just because, and this is kind of one of the things where it's like if you talk about beer tube being dead mm-hmm. from a viewer standpoint, and we'll I'll touch, we'll get back to this, but I have like I talk to on on a daily basis. 
I talk to, I would want to say maybe 15 to 20 beer tubers every day. Like, uh, we have a group chat going, a bunch of U.S. guys, a bunch of guys from the U.K., a bunch of guys from the Netherlands, stuff like that. And we're constantly talking. We're doing collab reviews. We're talking about the beer we're drinking and stuff like that. So as far as a community in and of itself, in that sense, it's definitely not. It's actually much more vibrant than it was back in the day because it was almost like a, everyone for themselves to a certain extent back in the day. Mm -hmm. But since I do talk to these people that are overseas, I know quite a bit about that scene just because in conversation. And over in Europe, couple different things are weird in the way they go about things. One, they're they're almost like um like when you lived in a small town in the United States, they're behind us as far as the trends. So, you know, Hazy IPA really didn't take off uh, over there with local breweries until much later. And the hype stuff and, and stuff, which did exist there, there's a bunch of breweries over there. The, there's um, uh, a Cloudwater and uh, the Colonel and uh, Moose Tail. There's a ton of breweries that are over there that are like the other halves and the cigar right. cities and all that stuff over, but they're over there, but they're just a little bit behind. But where, where, where I think they have a little bit easier access to beers um, that we don't is through their business model when it comes to how they can procure beers. For mm -hmm. one, they just, you know, they can go on all these and just get all kinds of crazy stuff, but they could also like, let's say if I go to Cloudwater, okay. And I go into their web shop to buy their beer. They have almost every other awesome brewery in Europe's beer on their web shop too, to where you can purchase it from their web shop. So if I want to get, you know, it'd be like going on another half site and let me get a little tree house. Let me get a little trillium too. Let me get a little this, that, and the other thing and buy it. Um, so it's, it's, it's like a weird format and that they're not restricted. Like if we want to go and buy a brewery direct from a brewery, we can only get those breweries beers. The only way we can get like a melange of that, whether it'd have to be through one of those resale services like Tavor or something like that to get yeah. like some kind of variety, um, that may also do singles over there, like four packs and six packs don't exist over there. Uh, it's singles or cases. So they have a lot of access to variety. We, we can get singles over here, but it's usually on a much higher markup. You know, if I buy a four pack of something that's 16 bucks, if I buy a single, it's probably going to be like seven bucks. So, it, you know, it's kind of weird to buy singles. So it's just such a, such a different market. But as we talked about previously, before we started recording, from my perspective, it seems like European beer tubes a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more kind of busy uh, to yeah. a certain extent. You said you talked to other beer tubers. How are you talking to them? Like on Discord or? Well, Facebook chat, typically. Um, oh, okay. That's our big one. We have a Facebook chat with a, it's, I can't even off the top of my head. It's, it's a, I think it's four different German, uh, or sorry, Nether guys from the Netherlands, a couple UK dudes. I want to say USA beer tubers, probably about 10 to 15, um, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, there are, most of them are very regional um, Northeastern United States when it comes to the U S beer tubers. Um, just cause we can do stuff like we have our get together every year where we all get together and hang out beer tube palooza or whatever. So that's how it all kind of started. We started a group chat to organize that and it just, Oh, let's add this person to the chat. Let's add this person to the chat and just end yeah, up. Yeah. I saw there was on. a big beer tubers meetup in uh, Niagara falls a week or two. Yeah. Ago. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't even I didn't know that happened until pretty much when it was happening, just because Rajay went up there and I'm friends with him on Facebook. And I'm like, oh, what are mm. you doing up there? He's like, oh, these Canadian guys um, are doing this kind of uh, beer, beer, uh, what will they say, brew tuber uh, uh, kind of con uh, hangout or whatever, which was so bizarre yeah. to watch them do it, to be perfectly honest with you, because that's the same exact way I got into beer tube when I first started getting into it. I hung out with the Canadian dudes and they were a completely different set of Canadian dudes, but where these people met and hung out were all the places I met and hung out when I went there 10 years ago, mm -hmm. Silversmith and then all these breweries right around Niagara on the lake. I'm like, dude, this is so weird. You're going to this thing with this whole group of Canadian beer tubers that I've never heard of. But I went to when it was Al Brian O'Rhino and uh, Maxwell Starr and uh, 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 Lee and Ewart and all these. Uh, 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 Paul Dave Brew News went up with me and like all these people in the same exact spot. So it was really weird to see that happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and there's a lot of um, like live hangouts now. Let me uh, let me mm -hmm. I'll bring up. This is my I subscribe to like every beer tuber that I can find, whether I like them or not. But I just okay. like, Joe D is doing a, a live show right now. And um, yeah. there's always these uh, live hangouts. Of course, like none of them are showing right now. Hey, there's you. Um, <laughs> and uh, oh, a beer a day with TK just did a video. Top 10 beer reviewers under a thousand subs. 
Um, that okay. gave me a few new people to watch. And uh, I got an email from somebody that said, uh, hey, I'm not Matt from Massive. Uh, here you go. Beardy Beer Reviews is having another like a live stream. And uh, I know Beer Man 421. He does a lot of uh, like live streams. Yeah, yeah uh, there's a bunch um, of people that do live streams on the regular. Um, mm -hmm. Like now on a regular um, one would be there's a relatively newer guy, uh, short and stout beer reviews named Sammy. Uh, he's from Australia. He probably does stuff. Oh, yeah, I just saw him. Times. Yeah, this several dude? times a week. Yep. He's such a funny dude, man. I've, I've, I've joined a couple of his live streams. Oh, he's doing Schleichler right now. Um, yeah. That's awesome. But um, and there you go. You can hop on there and do a live review with him. You have one. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> he's such a good dude. There's um, there's a. Uh, um, there's a couple of guys when we when we did our local semi regional local kind of beer tuber get together. It's mm -hmm. I think this is this year. It's going to be in Philly. You you might have got an email about it. I'm not I'm not I don't run it anymore, but I gave the yeah. email list to people. It's going to be mm -hmm. in Philly this year, and um, um, a couple of the guys that we never met before. Um, I just want to say three years ago started coming to it, and that was uh, one was Bumpy Roads, Bumpy Road Brewing. He's yeah. from Massachusetts. There's a guy called um, East Coast Liquor and Beer Reviews. Really nice kid. He's a younger kid. Um, they do live hangs like on the reg. That beer man you're talking about, he does a, yeah. a, a bunch of uh, – sometimes he'll do like uh, homebrew videos. Uh, yeah. He does a lot of homebrew uh, stuff. Uh, and there's still people that still do it. The four brewers do stuff a lot. Um, Joe, Joe Senegali from um, jo Joe's Beer Reviews, he's part of that. And so there's still a lot of activity uh, live and stuff. But here's the thing, and not to kind of just keep talking, to go back to your thing about, you know, now you can find Lagunitas and, and Wicked Weed and all that stuff. What I think you're talking about, I think still exists. It's just we don't cover it. Like if you, if all you reviewed was Side Project and Green Cheek and Monkish and Treehouse and Fox Farm, if, 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 because that's what, if you think about it, that's what those breweries are it, to what those breweries were. You know what I mean? The lagging yeah. sort of the world. They were hard to get. You couldn't find KBS. Like you said, KBS. I bought a four pack the other day just because I wanted some barrel aged beer just to throw in my fridge. 23 bucks. And I bought it at like this mom and pop bodega that does nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was, I think yeah, it might have been market now. Yeah. 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 So it's just like, whatever. Um, so those beers, that we coveted that we found really hard to find that probably drove viewership that drove subscribership. Mm -hmm. These regular beers just, they've ever been covered to the nth degree. You know what I mean? If yeah. you do a review now, like I do classics now, I call them massive beer review classes, go back and review an old beer. But if I pop up a Chimay review, it's just going to get lost in the ether of 9 billion different Chimay reviews. Or if I pop up a, you know, uh, uh, some Florida angry chair cycle, whatever you want to call it, kind of super stout. It's gonna, it's gonna resonate. People are gonna watch a little bit more. And I think since really? we don't live in that world much anymore, yeah, because that's what people are looking. You have to, you have to. And maybe a better way to put it is, we, we, the beers we reviewed and talked about, not exclusively, but a lot of the beers we reviewed and talked about were it could be hard to find or people didn't know about them. So they peaked interest, whereas, you know, talking about Wicked Weed Pernicious is just not going to move the needle for people where mm. if you talk about a, a side project, blah, 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 it's going to be a little bit more receptive. And I see it in my viewer views. Like, I'll, I, I, I pride myself on reviewing High Life or whatever, yeah. you know, easy to find beer. But when I pop off a rare beer, it's like four or five times the viewership. Really? Because I thought it would be the other way around no. based on well, SEO. Well, because if somebody well, types in Chimay Blue, like or even no. Budweiser, Bud Light, you know, hey, beers. Like I've heard difference. of that. I want to see what this guy says. You know, that's the difference. If I post Bud Light, it's going to be the most popular video I post. But what I'm talking about in the craft beer spectrum, like if I if I if I pop off a, you know, if I do whatever, what's a I see your Nevada Pale Ale might move a little bit but but lagoninas bells um founders it's not not so much anymore you either have to go super mainstream you know do a review of you know uh tecate or <laughs> or you have to do a review of some ultra rare stuff to really get movement that's funny you mentioned tecate that's my number one most viewed video <laughs> 
My number one most viewed video, I think, is not your father's root beer. Yeah, here, here's all my videos. I sort most popular. Yeah, Takate, fourteen thousand views. That was, I think, that was the summer of twenty ten or eleven, something like that. Oh yeah, and these top ten best and worst lists tend to do very well. Oh man, anytime you do, when I used to do a lot of like what I would call like editorial stuff, that's the stuff that would uh -huh. kill. Um, actually, no, Miller High Life, twenty two thousand. That's the that's the most popular one I have. Right behind it is not your father's root beer, but coming in third at seventeen thousand is um, uh, Lagunitas versus Sierra Nevada IPA. I'll bring up your channel so people can see. Yeah, yeah, sure, and then, and then like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's only five years ago. So if you think about it, it's almost half as old as all the all the other ones. Do you still have all those bottles somewhere? <laughs> nah, I threw them all out and. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was um. I carried them around a bit. I moved a couple times when I moved here. I had that set up, uh, but then I knew my um that setup that I had at my place I have now. Um, mm -hmm. I knew my son was coming, and I was renovating that room for him to live in. And then I built this. I was like, eh, get rid of it, you know. And I mean? just throw it all out. You you've like always I, had a beard, huh? Uh, not all my life, but once I got smartened up, I did. <laughs> my wife, my wife, flat out said. We would not be together if I didn't have a beard. Hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, I just, I just uh, cut mine. It was kind of driving me crazy, and now I'm just oh, dude. A beard. If you look at the review I posted recently, this mm -hmm. is like like shorter than it's been in like a billion years. Like I literally this morning just like cut it all yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. No, it's great. Yeah, I have that too. It's salt and pepper look, you know. Oh yeah, it's weird because if you go into some of my reviews about a year and a half ago, it's not mm -hmm. as it's not as salt and peppery because I was putting a little beard dye in it because I was changing careers and I wanted to look younger so I can mm -hmm. get a job easy. <laughs> you know, this is something I don't know if I asked you this when we did the podcast, but I would I would ask this for like every beer tuber if they're watching. It's like what what keeps you going? Because like obviously none of us are big enough that you're going to make a living on 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 youtube at least not on beer reviews you know except mm -hmm. simon um and and i like, guarantee i guarantee any money he, he I, I, he's not making a living off of it he's not uh, and if he says he's, he's a liar <laughs> i don't know he's told me that he just makes a living off youtube but i don't know that's I can, um, it, it, unless he has other channels that mm -hmm. multiple other channels like you have to get like you have to average like half 500,000, 250 to 500,000 a video, probably to, to make, I don't know, 50, 60K a year. I'll bring up a social blade. Oh, wait, it's, because uh, honestly, viewership means nothing. It means nothing. It's all about, it's all about uh, views and length of views. Yeah. I mean, he's getting about, yeah. at worst, a quarter million views between well, a quarter million no, and scroll, half million. Scroll, up. scroll all the way up, and I'll tell you how much he probably averages money-wise. All the way up to the top. That's his or estimated earnings monthly. So he's making $178 to $2.8 uh, grand a month. I find these... I, I don't think these numbers are even close. It's also I, a huge range I, there, too. But estimated yearly earnings let's say you let's say that top number is 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 not correct let's add 20 more grand onto that mm. that's barely making a living barely making a living in today's world especially in the uk yeah barely making a living you know what i mean so i think i think i think he's exaggerating you know what i mean <laughs> maybe now maybe he lives in you know a dual income household where the other person makes a ton of money and he doesn't have to worry mm -hmm. about that. I don't know that. I don't know. And again, this is all guesstimation. I don't know really know Simon. I've spoken to him briefly on a couple occasions. A very nice guy. Um, but that's the thing. Like you know, outside of in they're definitely not doing it. But outside of crap beer channel, who I think is probably the only one that's probably doing a little bit maybe but there's two guys and they do a lot of videography so obviously they probably yeah. work for some kind of marketing company um you just can't do it man and you just can't honestly it's like anybody who has 
the idea that this is going to be a major source of income for them. If it happens, I awesome. I will yeah. be the first person to clap for you, but it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, because even if you want to go to look at, you know, people like, for example, uh, you know, rest his soul, Greg's from get Greg's beer reviews. Mm-hmm. It, he look what was his subscribership now? Like he was probably I want to say he was probably in the fifties to sixties maybe uh, okay. as far as subscribership. Uh, let's see here. Thirty two thousand. Mm-hmm. He had just about six million total views. Okay, but but if you look. At his videos, his videos get the same amount of views as people with five, six yeah. thousand subs. So, you know, I mean, he gets a lot more views per. No, video that that I last know. video is, is an aberration because yeah. it's the one last one he posted before he died. But yeah. you're talking about like 400, 300, 200. There's ones that old two hundred. I mean, that's not crazy. Like that's kind of close to what I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. At least used to do, not so much anymore, just because I just my 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 uh format has changed. But I used to average four or five hundred, and you know, yeah. I'd make like two grand a year. Yeah, you know I mean, what yeah, what I mean? it's like, nice, like uh, you got Christmas money there. But what I'm saying is, is that in order to make a living, yeah, it's just not gonna happen. You oh, know, yeah, I totally agree. Because, like, I like you know, my other genre on YouTube is gig tube stuff talking about uber mm-hmm. lyft doordash all that stuff and like those guys like the be- the biggest gig tubers are dwarf um simon you know like he might get like half yeah. a million views per month and they'll get like 20 million views you know especially like shorts i mean a view is a view whether it's a short or a long i mean although you make a lot more money on long form content than on shorts mm-hmm. if you get a short that gets like 20 million views you're gonna get a decent paycheck off that yeah but shorts are they shouldn't be used for any metric i mean they're kind mm-hmm. of like you know like like if you you know like you see people that just have like short based stuff like i you know there's like to me yeah i don't know I don't know. To me, I, I see YouTube channels and I've seen beer tube channels where I go there and they have like no videos and they're all shorts. And I'm like, they're not even a beer tube channel. <laughs> it's just like, it's yeah. like a joke. It's, 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 it's short form Instagram, whatever. It's like basically just trying to, you're not doing anything. You're not informing anybody. You're not doing anything. It's, it's really, it's almost like a joke. Yeah. I, yeah. So getting back to my question from a few minutes ago, like what, what keeps you going? Like, why, oh. why are you still doing this if you're only getting a few dozen or a few hundred views per video? Just the love Honestly, of the game. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's more to it than just that. Um, the fun of it. You know what I mean? It's fun because, you know, you get to talk. I've met, I've met so many cool people um, through this. I, you know, a person that was a subscriber to my channel was at my wedding. You know what I mean? Like, I've met, I've met genuine lifelong friends through this. So if I were to strip away everything else from it, that in and of itself is worth it. Just because, you know, I'm, you know, even though I act, you know, I talk loudly and boisterous, I'm a pretty invert, introverted person. Um, so it's it, it, the fun of it, beer. Hey, here's a new beer. Let me review it. Now I'm lucky enough to where I'm at. One of the things I hit on early in this was create and find a dedicated space, even if it's small, to do the videos. So if I want to review a beer i literally have to sit down get a glass get a beer and i hit three buttons and the camera starts rolling i talk 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 hit three buttons cameras off i'm done i get i if, if i record a seven minute video mm-hmm. i'm spending eight minutes like i'm not yeah. setting up i'm not checking yeah, you don't things. you don't really edit or do thumbnails you just nope. post it nope. like raw yep. footage yep. That's a personal thing. I think that's the purest way to do it. I don't like jump cuts. You know, I'm not. I'm not against people doing. You know, uh, cards or 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 you know all that stuff. Have at it. But I'm just like, I just think I like the one shot and done. It's kind of like live music. You know, you can go. You know, yeah. You, you listen to a band, they're great, and then you see them live, and you're like, they're hot garbage. Oh, because they're <laughs> editing their stuff to make themselves good. And you see all these people with uh, jump cuts. Or one of my biggest pet peeves. A lot of people like start the beer review with the with the beer open. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, that's like, I know people 
that basically do the beer review a couple times and then talk about, oh, this is the first time I'm experiencing this thing. I'm yeah. so blown away, but I'm getting all these flavors, you know? Um, so it's more I mean, just a like they get like a head start, like there are already a few sips in and then they start the review. Not just that, you know, there, there's some people out there that like they'll do it and then they'll like talk and be like, wait, did, am I sure? Like, I know people that have like rewrote because mm -hmm. they said there's cascade in it or Citra. And they were like, well, let me look it yeah. up before. Oh no, I'm wrong here. I got to re-record. Like that's mm -hmm. bullshit, you know. Um, same thing with like mystery beers and stuff like that. But um, uh, but yeah, it, it, yeah. But to go back mm -hmm. to it, your original question, the fun of it, um, the people I got to meet. Not gonna lie, access. You know what I mean? Like you know, not so much anymore. But like when I was in my heyday, because if, I would say about like three to four years ago, I kind of like stopped doing beer reviews as much as I did kind of tapered them back to like once a week and now I'm ramping it back up just because I have the time and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, a, a lot yeah. of breweries are sending beers, a lot of viewers were sending beers. So it was a lot of access to different things, you know, you know, go to a, you know, go to, uh, uh walk up to go to a beer festival, you know, don't have to pay to get in. Someone's like, Hey, what are you doing? Don't wait in line. Come with me or stuff like that. Like there's a, you know, and then, you know, Tavor was sending me stuff for a while. And then, like, you know, it's, it's, so that's always nice. Um, yeah. And, you know, just, you know, why not? What else am I going to do? I'll, I'll, ask <laughs> you a tough, I'll ask you a tough question. Like, it's kind of like a two-part question. Like, yeah. how do you know when it's time to hang it up? Like, by, and by, I mean, like, you personally or also any beer tuber. I don't, I mean, if you have a problem with drinking, then yeah, obviously you should <laughs> hang it up. Um, but outside of that, um, whenever you want, you know, like I've had a couple people, um, I've had a couple people write me, um, that wanted to start a channel. Uh -huh. Like they'd be like, you know, I want to start a beer tube channel. Um, I was wondering, you know, what advice you could give me you know what i mean i've had like a, a bunch of people write me that over the years mm -hmm. and uh, number one answer is just have fun with it you know what i mean like have fun with it enjoy it don't expect anything you know what i mean like if you expect you're going to become like the mr beast of beer reviews it's not it's probably not going to happen if it does then i will eat crow and i'm yeah. happy that it happened to you but it's probably not going to happen just enjoy it have fun with it don't put pressure on yourself outside of all the other stuff like get a mic get a good camera yeah. like all that stuff goes a long way but just have like you know just have fun with it and, and enjoy what you're doing because if you enjoy what you're doing and you don't focus on those other things you don't focus on i have to make some money or i have mm -hmm. to get this i, I want to yield results within a certain amount of time it, it becomes a job and who the hell wants to make this their job I can't remember if we talked about this when we did the podcast a few months ago, but there's this Polish guy, Brower Kapria. And no, does, we, I think we mentioned it, but I know of him. I yeah, yeah. He does his all his videos are in Polish, and he gets tons of views. Like he, well, I would have to actually. Let me see. Let me bring him up on Social Blade. Because I was gonna say, I think he gets even more views than Simon, but they're all in Polish. Because like when I do my beer tubers directory in the standings or whatever i'm only counting english speaking beer tubers because like that's the only fair way to do it because if i if i start counting this guy then i gotta go like well know, i'm and sure there's huge spanish speaking beer tubers japanese beer tubers you know i will say German. this i will say this you're wow, technically you can... and and this is my and i would be curious if you ever uh, do you still do those videos i don't know i saw one or two because i got tagged the rankings yeah uh, I used to do them monthly, but now I'm just doing them every six months or maybe even once I a would year. Love, I would love, because I, like I said, I got tagged in one or two and I looked at it. Mm -hmm. I would love to see you do one that was based off of shorts and based off of la, uh, actual beer reviews. I, I would love to too, but YouTube doesn't differentiate the view count between but, long. Only and because short. when I went and looked, like over half of the people on there had like almost no regular videos. And it's like yeah. you have like to count a short view the same as a a, a, a video view is like mm. that's insanity. <laughs> you should almost yeah. do an algorithm. I know it's you probably can't do it, but it's I would imagine it would be like if you get like 500 short views, should be like one regular view on a video. 
There might be a way, like if you have like a premium subscription on uh, Social Blade, you might be able to, and like if you know how to code, you might be able to write a script that would differentiate between long form and shorts. But because um, I get like, I, like let's really say let's say I average, <laughs> let's say I average for the sake of conversation, just for the sake of conversation, two hundred views a video. Let's say mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true or not. If I posted a, a video of uh, that showed a can of beer and all it was me farting on a can of beer and posting it as a short, I guarantee I would get five times more views yeah. than a regular video. So to me, that it just doesn't make sense. To, yeah, it, and yeah. there's certain channels that, uh, and actually everybody's doing this now. Is nobody knows how intellectual property laws work and uh, how like like response videos or reaction videos are supposed to work. Cause like everybody is just regurgitating like Hollywood content as shorts with like almost no like content of their own or whatever. I see mm -hmm. this like every day and I'm like, these people are going to get nuked. Like their channel is going to get nuked um, eventually. I mean, I'm not going to name names. There's, there's like certain, there's one beer tuber that just flat out copy and pasted a, a video from, a bar rescue and it has like 15 million views. But then if you go on his channel, like all his other content all gets like a dozen views each. It's like 99.9% .9 of all his traffic is coming off this one short that has like 15 million views and still brings in traffic every month. I don't know if he's making revenue on that or not. Um, but uh, yeah, and like a lot of other beer tubers, like they're just, they're trying to like make like the shorts like to go viral, but it's like, they're so like, hacky and cliche and like not especially funny you know like everybody well, I mean, but it's also what do you want to get out of it like you asked me what i what, why i do it or it, it, everybody's motives can be different mm -hmm. you know what i mean like if you want to be you know a, a meme lord or, or, or a clip person <laughs> more, yeah. more power to you have at it you know what i mean like you know don't drink beers that makes pretty good money being a meme generator you know what i mean like he like and if you want to do that that's fine but the thing i see which is people get frustrated with is that like they want to do beer content and then like there's some people that do it that's like i don't know i don't want to say the words they feel like they're not they don't get the recognition they should because they're like because they're popular but they're like you're not making really you're not it's a difference between like uh, influencer and journalism is how I always put it. What do you want to be? Yeah. You want to be an influencer? Or do you want to be a journalist? I'm not calling your YouTuber journalist, but I'm like, that's the difference. Are you an investigative reporter or are you a, you know what I mean? Like, what are you? Like, what do you want to be? Do you want to write the gossip column or do you want to write op-eds? Like, what, what, right, what right, what's right. going on? So it's like, it's like to lump everybody into the same boat is kind of weird. So it's like, what are you looking to get out of it? You know, are you looking to tell a story? Are you looking to give information? Are you looking to help somebody out? You know what I mean? Or are you looking just for internet popularity? Um, you know, we have in that group chat I have, we have like a, a, a not, I want, I don't want to sound cruel, but like a running joke. We always, we have this kind of like, how long is this person going to last in beer tube kind of thing going on <laughs> where, where is, is what will happen is, and we see it a lot, quite a bit is that somebody will join beer tube and then they'll find one of our channels and like comment on like 80 different videos and then go on Instagram and comment on 80 different pictures and then follow and blah, blah, blah. blah and then basically just like, you know I mean? Shock and awe the channel and then move mm -hmm. on to the next person, move on to the next person. And do that for a month and then they're gone because they're like, I didn't get a million subscribers in a month. So that this bores me. Now. Yeah. I need to do something else. So whereas the people that, you know, typically get, you know, get a foothold in there, the people like, you know, they're just doing it because they like it. And it, it doesn't matter if they have that kind of backing or following. Yeah. Have you ever reached the point where you're kind of like, it's funny going back to Simon. We, we were saying this on my podcast. Like we kind of like run out of adjectives after a while, you know. <laughs> you ever reach that point where it's just kind of like, you know, there's there's nothing I can really say about this beer that I haven't already said about a dozen or few dozen other beers, you know? Or is it yeah. still? Like... No. Yes, I understand. I understand the question uh, or the statement, um, mm -hmm. but I, I, you could say the same thing about music or food mm -hmm. or a movie because it's 
we've all been done before. They say what's the the running joke in the film industry is there's five movies have ever been written. That's it. You know what yeah. I mean? They're just different variants on five different movies. Um, but there's such subtle nuance in it um, that I think, and I, I think that's where beer tube kind of makes most sense because, you know, my personal, my personal kind of ethos has always been, you know what I mean? Try not to be uber technical. Not that I'm an uber technical person to begin with, but you know, you can talk about nuanced flavors and here and any other thing. Is it good? Is it excellent? Is it bad? Or is mm -hmm. it, and why, you know? So like when the beer reviews that I tend to have, like that people gravitate towards are when I have a really good beer and I, and I'm genuinely excited about it. Like, it's not so much that I'm saying a, catchphrase or uh, being like you know this is in it or this is in it it's like man be like Bob, because it's just like good it's good and then showing it and through that sense rather than a, a specific key set of words um so i think it's yeah. more that like you're gonna there's only, only so much you can say about shit you know what i mean so yeah. um so showing showing interest and showing emotion and being honest which i think is the most important thing uh, that's probably one of the big things for a lot of beer tubers that they do when they first start off or even when, throughout the whole thing is they're afraid to be yeah. neutral. There's, also, there's like this, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but I mean, when it comes to beer reviews, you know, there's only so much you can convey to the viewer off of just describing it. Cause like you can, like, there's so many beers that like you would say this is citrusy, but like you'd have like five different kind of citrusy flavors on five different beers and like, I mean, like you can be like really, really specific and or sometimes you can be too specific and it might like the viewer has like no idea what you're talking about, you know, like instead of saying this is like fruity, you might say like this is lychee and uh, use a fruit or something, you know, or. Uh, I, I think know. a lot of people make that shit up, too. I think a lot of people say those <laughs> words and don't actually get them just to sound sound like they, they're getting stuff yeah. that they don't, you know. And then there was an old Seinfeld joke, I think from like the 80s or something. He was like. Why do they cook on TV? You can't. We can't smell it. We can't taste it. At the end, they hold it up to the camera and say, "Hey, you can't have any." You know. <laughs> yeah. Our beer reviews are sort of like that. You know, it's like I can only. You have to go off my words. Like until we have taste of vision and smell of vision, you know, there's still a few senses lacking that the viewer, you know, can't pick up. So they just have to go off. Yeah, like our enthusiasm and our adjectives and our adverbs. <laughs> well, that too. That and I think a lot of it. Um, you know, the, the old analogy, the old analogy I used to use, which probably doesn't play much now is we're like Pandora for beer. Uh, mm -hmm. So you want to insert Spotify or Apple music, go ahead, do that. But you know, the, 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 the thing that I've always enjoyed about music services is that, you know, being old part, that's salt and peppery gray now. And I just don't have the time to really have my, 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 my self knee deep in the music anymore is, you know, you pop in, some of my favorite bands into Pandora, Spotify. And then, Hey man, if you like this, you're probably going to like that. Yeah. Um, so I think followers of the channel, at least the, the, the ardent ones that really do follow, because everybody has a different taste set. You know, everybody likes specific things, you know, we're going to be like, well, he's really excited about this beer. And every time he gets excited about these style of beer, I, I try it and I love them. Um, I'm most likely going to love it. You know what I mean? Where there's sometimes we're like, yeah, you know, he, his take on Shores beer. I just, you know, every time he likes a Shores beer, I try it and it's just not for me. So if he's digging on a Shores beer, I'm probably not going to buy it. But man, if he's low ABV, hazy pale ale, he's freaking out. Probably, yeah. I'm probably going to like it. So I think you get a little bit of that with a following on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the kind of, bookend this and come back to the beginning you know like the mm -hmm. title of this episode is going to be is beer tube dead i mean i i've been saying this in comments for a while i say beer tube died when chris Steltz quit at least for me like it's just not as it's not some kind of buzz or tastemaker kind of thing is is isn't really here anymore and also i think like the actual quality of beer tubers i feel like has gone down which is ironic because <clears throat> It's so much easier now. Like everybody has HD cameras. Everybody like it's fairly easy to get a, a good microphone. But so many people are just like they don't know what they're talking about 
<clears throat> or they just want to get on camera and talk and chug a 40, you know, and just, or like so many people are just <laughs> live streaming for hours and hours and hours. I'm like, who is watching mm -hmm. this? You know, yeah. I'm like, I, I don't, I feel like just get to the point. Don't waste my time. Um, know what you're talking about. So, I mean, I don't know. It, Cause I, I feel like this is like a therapy session right now because I have like, I've quit or gone on hiatus many times mm -hmm. and I, I've been kind of feeling that way again. Cause I'm kind of like, you know, I'm only getting a few dozen episodes or a few dozen views per video. And like, I feel like, I feel like I'm putting out like much higher quality content than most, most beer tubers. I know maybe that sounds like a, you know, arrogant thing to say or whatever. Um, and I'm like, I'm not getting the views. I'm like, I'm trying to do like SEO and all that stuff, like to the best of my ability, as far as I've researched, you know, I'm trying to like mimic the people who actually are bringing in the me mega views. And it's frustrating that, you know, like I, like in every once in a while, somebody would leave a comment and like, you know, you have 4,000 subscribers, but only 0.1% of them are watching your videos. I'm like, well, I mean, that's kind of normal. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, like I said, this no, is kind of my, my therapy session. So, no, I mean, I, I'm glad that you're saying. doing it for the love of the game. And I'm doing it for no. the love of the game, too. But I just feel like the excitement just isn't what it was from 10, 15 years ago. I get it. I, I totally get it. You know what I mean? And and I understand it. It's frustrating. There's just so many different factors go into it, man. Whether it's living or dying. And, and again, it goes back to what I said earlier. What is what is the ultimate goal you're looking to get out of it? So, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? If your ultimate goal, and I'm not saying you, I say when I say you, I mean, you know, you, the people. You all. <laughs> um, yeah, y'all. Um, you know, if your goal is subs, views, and cred, then like if that's your if that's your goals, that's cool. And if you don't get those things and you want to bounce, that's cool. There's nothing wrong. No one, no one, no one cares if you leave. But if that's your if that's your goal, and the way beer tube has gone and it's changed, like if I showed you my like I used to average fifty to hundred subscribers a month mm -hmm. or for three or four years, and now I average ten to twenty a month. You know yeah, what I mean? Get like, like one a day. Yeah. So like, so it's one of those things where, uh, you know, it is what it is. So if you're looking for those numbers and you're not getting them, then that sucks for you. But in the grand scheme of things, is it dead for me? No, because I still find people. I still find new people. I still find new friends. I still find new beers. Like one of the cool things about beer tube is the people, the coolest thing for me is when subscribers send me beer like it's awesome when a brewery sends me beer that's great it's really cool you feel a little bit of love in the heart but it's like when someone takes their money goes and buys some beer and then sends yeah. it to you that's pretty awesome but the cool th thing about that is almost every single time that happens they always ask me what do you want <laughs> they say what do you want they're like i live here what do you want and my answer every single time is whatever you whatever i've never heard of before i don't want what i want i want what i've never seen before i want to yeah. try new things and having that outlet to, to these new things um that i've never seen before works for me and makes me happy and it makes me think that this stuff is really pretty cool you know i i'm classic curmudgeon or at least i was a classic curmudgeon to where everything was dumb and the only things yeah. that were cool the things that i liked and mm -hmm. I've softened that stance immensely over the years. Um, and so the new people doing stuff, I don't really hate on it that much. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, cool, you do you, you know what I mean? I'm not going to yuck your yum. You have fun with what you're doing. Is it stupid from a sense of technicality or whatever? Sure. Whatever. But you see somebody putting themselves out there. You know what I mean? When I first started doing beer reviews, I go watch my first stuff. I looked like an asshole. Now, I feel <laughs> like I had a skill set and a knowledge base that worked, but I also seem pretty weird and dumb, too. Um, and then you have to factor in fucking COVID, man. Like, a lot of these beer tubers, the new guys have probably started because of COVID. You know, they probably couldn't hang out. They yeah. couldn't go to the bar. They couldn't go to the tap room. They couldn't go wherever. And they're like, well... I guess I'll drink beer online. Oh, other people are doing this. Let's get together and do this stuff online. So everybody has their own motivation. Uh, is it is it is it not as popular as it was? Hundred percent. Is it dead? Not by any stretch of the imagination. 
Yeah, and look I, at I vinyl would, records. I would agree with that. Look at, look at vinyl I don't even know records. how you would define, like, like I don't think there's like an objective way to say it unless like every single beer tuber quit and like nobody was making the videos anymore. You know, mm-hmm. like, but yeah, it's it's definitely, yeah, it's, and it's also uh, I know it's like the the people asking these questions are people like us, like Gen X and Boomers. Although there actually aren't that many young people. I mean, there's I'm, there's millennials, but there's like, as far as I can tell, there's very few people like who like just turned 21 other than maybe like some English beer tubers or something. It's mostly, you know, 35 and up. And actually a lot of them are probably 45 to 60, you know. Anybody out and, there want to start a beer tube channel? Open, <laughs> do a whiskey. Do Go do a bourbon. That's a, you're gonna oh, make way more way more views they're, they're, than we do. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah, just go start a bourbon channel. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, All right, well, we've been yeah. going almost an hour, so oh, yeah. thanks to Matt for uh, doing yeah. this uh, last minute podcast. I was just gonna ramble and talk to the camera for an hour, but I was like, you know, let me let me get another beer tuber in here, so you know we can at yeah, least have pleasure, a dude. conversation. So uh, yeah, uh. Keep on keeping on, and uh, I'll see you on Beer Tube. I'm all out of beer. <laughs> awesome. Cheers. <laughs>